So if it's available to you, uh, finding the domain and range is always best done with a uh, graphing calculator of some sort. Let's uh, try it first without a graphing calculator. Uh, a little bit harder to do it this way, but sometimes it's just not available to you. First, the domain. Uh, and the domain represents all the values for x that you can plug in that don't break any rules. Uh, the big things we want to look out for in the domain is if we take the square root of a negative or if we divide by 0. And square root of a negative is a big problem here. x can be 4, but x cannot be less than 4. Because if you were to plug in 3, 3 minus 4 would make a square root of a negative 1. So x has to be greater than uh, or equal to 4. Could be exactly 4 because 4 minus 4 makes 0. Um, there's no restrictions to how high x could go. x could be a billion. A billion minus 4 is still a positive number, and you can take the square root of a positive number, no problem. So this represents our domain. So the range represents all the values for y that can come out of the function. So when you're trying to think of the range, think of where your variable can be. This is the only place where it can be. And so let's take this term and imagine how low it can possibly be. We can't take the square root of a negative. You can never get a negative number out of a square root because we define the square root to be uh, the positive values uh, that, multi that multiply by themselves to make a number. So uh, only positive values or zero could come out of here. Uh, because if you plug in exactly four, four minus four makes zero, the square root of zero is zero. So zero is as low as this term can go. Zero minus ten means that the lowest our whole function can go is negative ten. Um, so let's see how high this value can go. You, we said there's no restrictions on x. You can plug in a billion. You can plug in a trillion. We can keep imagining bigger and bigger numbers. This keeps getting infinitely big, so there's no limit to how high this can go. Uh, so we're going to say the range is uh, y is greater than or equal to, oh shoot, that's the wrong way. Negative 10 is less than or equal to y, or what more commonly stated, y is greater than or equal to negative 10. But now let's do it graphically. Uh, so to make the graph fit, change my axes to be going by 10. Uh, and so uh, my graphing calculator gives me something like this. Not the world's greatest drawing, but uh, it supports our uh, non-graphical calculator answers. Starts on negative 4 on the x-axis and goes infinitely positive. So that's why, where we get the domain from. All the values for x that can go into the function. Starts on negative 4, never has an end. So we say that x, oops, it's all jumbled up. We say for the domain that x is greater than negative 4. Uh, and y, uh, the, the range represents all of the values for y that can come out of a function. Uh, so it starts on negative 10, my graphing calculator says. That's as low as y can go. And if you keep zooming out, the graph slowly, very slowly gets larger. It really has no limitation to how high it can go. So the range is y is greater than negative 10. Uh, you have to keep zooming out to see that happen. That's why knowing how to do it non-graphically is helpful.